shout out of the week goes out to Mark D7. Thank you for your support on the channel, my friend. Always good to see you making comments on the videos. And now you too have one more subscriber. Hi, my name is Arius, and today I'm going to answer your questions about the best builds, how to get the gear, and how to grind for the materials and currency you'll need to get all this gear. We're talking end game magic, folks, so that you can finally beat the abyss or become the number one player in the world as the new Arena Grand Champion. Yup, that's right. Imagine that, being the number one in the world at something. It's quite the achievement. In fact, this achievement is honored reverently by the Blades community. Let me show you. Here in the Good Game Discord channel, managed by Babalu and his Bloodborne gang, we can see that they have records of all the Arena Grand Champions etched forever in the history of the season leaderboards going back to Season 3, when we first began the monthly scoreboard resets. So how do you get there? It definitely takes skill and dedication, but without the right gear, your journey will be quite difficult and maybe even impossible. So how do we go about acquiring the right gear? Let's start with the most important, our weapons and shields. Why? Because damage is king. There's no such thing as a god mode tank in this game. Unless you're like a level 10 dude fighting a level 50 dude, then yeah, the level 50 dude is pretty much gonna be a tank to the level 10 dude. So hands down, the easiest way to get the best weapons in the game is to actually play the game and grind for the sigils. Imagine that, huh? Yup, that's right. Sigils are by far the best currency in the game. What makes it even better is that sigils can't be bought with real money or transferred to your other character. So they really are a symbol of your own personal progression, meaning that you have what it takes to conquer some of the hardest dungeons in order to acquire that many sigils. All the more reinforcing the idea that this game is definitely not pay to win. So these event quests, they're dungeons where you conquer for sigils. And thanks to player feedback, these event quests have been made more available than ever. So as long as you're willing to play the game, you can earn these top tier weapons. So let's focus on what's powerful in the arena right now. Frost has always been king because of the frost bug that resets your opponent's manual attack once the frost condition has been applied. So if you want to take advantage of this broken mechanic, here's how. Currently, the best frost weapons are we have Baradin's Axe, versatile axe that has a frost boost and a minus magicka ravage. Then there's Mephala's Teacher. It's a versatile mace, the same with the frost bonus, but this one has a stam ravage. Then there's Storm Kiss. It's a two-handed axe that has frost bonus and the magicka ravage. And finally, there's the Axe of the Frost Gladiator, which is just another version of the Baradins with Frost and Magicka Ravage. But Arius, which one is the best? Well, like any build, it depends on what your goal is. Also remember this, there's no one good build. There's a foundation for good builds and variations of those foundations. So if your goal is to drain stamina, then use Mephala's Teacher. If your goal is to do more damage, use the Storm Kiss two-hander. All right, so let's move on to the next best element, poison. And here are the best poison weapons. Serpent Strike. It's a versatile sword with Ravage Stam and Magic. And finally, Spider Fang, a two-handed ax with the double Ravage as well. Poison ends up being really strong because if you have enough poison damage, you can get a paralyzed to stick to your opponent, which will render them useless so that you can unleash a nasty combo. I've watched a player land a paralyze with one health point left while their opponent was almost above 90% health. And with that one paralyze, the light weapon combo damage, man, it was one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. And finally, the two elements that do a lot of damage, fire and shock. Here are the weapons you should try to get. Lich Slayer, a versatile sword with fire bonus and magic ravage. Lich Burner, same thing, it's a two-hander though, with a sword and the fire and magic ravage. And then finally the Maul of Oriel, it's a two-handed mace with a fire bonus and the magic ravage. 
for the shock or the lightning builds. You have Thunderfell, which is a versatile mace that has a double ravage, and Stormcaller, the two-handed mace with the double ravage. Fire builds combined with Wall of Fire, and likewise, shock builds with Thunderstorm end up helping to stop strong, aggressive builds by being aggressive yourself. You can really open with a lot of damage, and if used correctly, can easily overcome most opponents. Now, what about non-elemental builds? Well, right now, there's a strong weapon offering on breaching weapons, so that means two-handed weapons. That's really all they have, so if you're a fan of the two-handed breaching playstyle like I am, I suggest you pick these babies up. Either the Breathtaker, which is a two-handed sword that has breaching and double ravage, or Captain Cordan's Saber, which is the same thing, just two different skins. Now there's an Akaviri Blade, it's a two-handed sword with breaching that has a stamina ravage and a 15% bonus to the primary enchantment, which means that it'll do more damage to blocking targets. I actually like this because this is what I use myself. Then there's Sunderblade, which is basically the same thing. Now, for you to understand why these end up being the best weapons, and if you plan on being an arena grand champion one day, you're going to need a good variety of these weapons. Since blades can easily be a game of paper, scissor, rock, you'll want to be prepared for any situation. Keep in mind that these tips are more or less a general idea and can be modified or even enhanced through your own experience and gameplay. So you'll see a common trend with the secondary bonuses, and that's the minus maximum stamina or the minus maximum magic, otherwise known as Ravage. This is a very important secondary that can make the difference in a fight because it will drain resources of the value mentioned for every hit you land. So if you have a drain magic of 52 and you cast quick strikes, you'll drain 104 of your opponent's magicka, which can actually stop them from casting a very important spell. And it's the same with stamina. The only weapons you can get from the sigil store with double drain bonus is the poison and shock sets. Note that there's only two types of shields in the sigil shop, the double drain magic and the double drain stamina. Both are good to have. The shield of stasis slash apathy is a very good, especially against frost users. The shield of coral is the one that drains magic with a double drain secondary, and that's pretty good against mages. So if you have enough sigils, the best weapon set to build out as a versatile fighter is definitely a combo with the double drain secondaries. If you only have enough to start with one weapon and shield combo, I would start with Baradin's Axe and Shield of Stasis. You get a lot of drain from the shield to minimize your opponent's ability to attack and defend, as well as the frost condition which further locks them down. That's coming from the Baradin's Axe. This is by far the easiest combo to start with. Once you get enough sigils, then go for Serpent Strike, or its other poison variants, followed by Thunderfell and then Lich Slayer. As a two-hander, your best bet is to start with Breathtaker, and then go to the two-hander Frost Axe. Then after that, you can go for the Maul of Oriel, as well as the two-handed Lightning Mace. Let's move on to the Sigil Armor pieces. For the most part, if you plan on using this gear in the arena, the critical health bonuses are not worth it. The reason is because of how health scales up in the arena, and that by the time the crit health bonus activates, your health is so low it's not worth it. That doesn't mean that it's not good for PvE. You could even build it well for PvP if you had the right gear and the right knowledge. You just really have to know what you're doing to make a crit health build work in PvP. But for PvE, things like the Abyss are easier if you have a nice crit health build and that's what some of this gear is good for. But you'll see that the Sigil Armor pieces have enchantment resists of fire, shock, and poison. In arena combat, you won't get much benefit from having anything other than health, stamina, or magic. So I don't really recommend enchanting your armor pieces with elemental protection for PvP, which is why I wouldn't buy any of these sigil armor pieces. I would much rather focus on buying the weapons and other assured enchantment pieces first. What about rings and necklaces from the sigil store? Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about the best primary enchantments for jewelry. For necklaces, the most important is going to be Physical Damage Ignores Resistance, or PDIR. Because regardless if you're a mage or warrior, physical damage is what's going to do the majority of your damage. And PDIR doesn't require a condition to enable, so it's the most valuable. 
The second best will be anything that enhances your damage. Increase physical damage on condition or PDOC is a good one. EDOC or increase elemental damage on condition can also be good as long as you're using elemental damage. Now, if you want to do more physical damage while the opponent is conditioned, meaning they got hit with an element that would cause them to be either frozen, slowed, or shocked, or set on fire, or poisoned. Any of those conditions will increase the damage if you have physical damage on condition or PDOC. Now for rings and gauntlets, you'll want to try to match as many secondaries as possible so that you could take advantage of having the enchantment synergy bonus. This is definitely something that you will need on your necklace. Enchantment synergy is by far one of the best, so if you could have four or more on the necklace, then you'll be in good shape. What else should you have on your necklace? Well, you could have the matching set bonus or anything else that increases damage. So if you can end up with four PDIR, that will be really powerful. Chances are, it'll be very difficult to get the right ones immediately. So just do the best with what you have. Don't really bother for defensive secondaries because they just really aren't worth having on jewelry or gloves. The best ones will by far be the ones that increase your offensive capabilities. So can you buy these items in the Sigil store? Not really as I described. You can buy some with PDOC on them, but they'll also have something useless like increased resistance at crit health. So you would be wasting some of your sigils if you need something more importantly like a good weapon with double ravage. So if you have enough sigils and have already bought the weapons, I would go for the jewelry and gloves that have the plus two assured enchantment bonus on them. That way, when you go to enchant, you at least have a chance of getting a decent secondary. For mages, it'll be really important to have the plus three or plus four to the magic spells that you'll be using. That's what makes rings very important. Now, as a warrior, you don't really need to increase your warrior skills as much because high stamina skills really isn't that valuable to a warrior. You're better off just using level one skills and having enough stamina to cast more skills. So that's pretty much all you need from the sigil shop. Let's talk about crafting the rest. If you're going to craft weapons or shields and have sigils to spare, I recommend buying the pre-made items with plus two assured enchantment bonus. Otherwise, good luck and try hard to make the same weapons you see in the sigil shop. You can get lucky and end up with a double ravage frost weapon or a double ravage fire weapon, something you can't get in the sigil shop right now. First off, Crafting rings and necks are going to be very important. Necklaces you'll want to have bonuses plus four or higher if possible on enchantment synergy, maximum power, matching set, and any of the weapon bonuses that you primarily use. Otherwise, go for the element to pair with your favorite elemental set. What do you use as primary enchantment on your offensive pieces? That's the jewelry and gloves, right? Well. Health regen is good for PvE if you're doing something like the Abyss. Otherwise, you'll want to have regen that supports your primary functions, magic for mage and stamina for warrior. I've seen some very viable hybrids. For example, two-handers that use magic regen works just as well. So decide what type of regen is right for you. Then, build it into either your shield primary enchantment or armor primary enchantments like scale armor or divine scale armor like glass, leather, elven, etc. As well as build it into your necklace primary enchantment. For gloves and rings, you want to maximize your elemental damage if that's what you're using on your weapons. Otherwise, warlocks is nice if you have it or go with stamina or magic regen. Health for PvE. I say go all elemental in this case because more damage will always be valuable over regen, especially with everyone using Ravage now anyway. If you're using non-elemental attacks like breaching or a speed weapon, I start with stamina regen and see what works with your build. For armor, a lot of folks say that the best secondary is spell resist. While spell resist is very powerful, if you can get two different weapon resists on three pieces, that would probably build you the best armor set. So you end up with two resist cleaving, two resist bashing, and two resist slashing. If you have plenty of sigils saved, you can invest in some divine gear that have built-in elemental and weapon resists like glass, stalrim, 
and even elven, and then shoot for the secondaries that I mentioned. As a mage, once you get comfortable in the arena, I suggest you switch to two health and one magic piece, and as a warrior, two health and one stamina. This way, you get a larger resource pool to deal with the ravaged resource weapons you see a lot of in the high-level arenas. Ideally, as a warrior, I would like to build out a perfect resist weapon set on dragon scale gear since it gives poison and cleaving resistance, and then divine sets on glass, stalarum, and daedric mail, all with two of each resist cleaving, bashing, and slashing. The reason this is more valuable than spell resist is because with enough EDIR, spell resist becomes useless anyway, so better to resist weapon damage instead. I hope that sums it up for you. You'll see that crafting is definitely much harder to yield good gear because of the low chance of getting good secondaries. So you're much better off at building your endgame gear sets with sigils. So keep playing those event quests. If you're just leveling up, play the event quests as far as you can go. If you can't beat the last level, that's okay. Just save your sigils until after level 45. Then you can start buying all the cool endgame gear you need. If you have everything out of the sigil store, then go for the enchanting grind. You may end up with something really cool. Here are three of my favorite two-handed weapons I'd love to share before we part ways. Thanks for watching. My name is Arius, and I play games. Cheers, my friends.